My name is Catherine Romey. It's February 24th, 2009. My story is about Catherine Mazeppa Salich. It's titled Bubba's Journey. In mid-1960, my Bubba, my grandmother, had a depilatory stoke. Knowing I was one of her favorite grandchildren, I felt I should do something, anything to help. When my Aunt Jean and Uncle Ange asked if I could sit with Bubba and my younger cousins while they took a well-deserved evening out, I was grateful for the chance to do something for them and for my Bubba. As it occurred, Bubba gifted me with insight that was unknown to her entire family. Only after I washed her and tried to dress her, making the mistake of putting her unusable arm in the sleeve before her damaged limb, and her laughing at my ignorance, did she begin her reaccounting of her coming to America. Soon realizing the importance of her recollection, I asked my cousins to listen also. Only the youngest of my cousins obliged, and with one of the eldest grandchildren, Catherine, and one of the youngest grandchildren, Annette, Bubba's story was tape recorded. Bubba's mother had died in childbirth when Bubba was a teenager in the early 1900s. Being the eldest daughter at home in the Ukraine, she did all the household duties. Bubba continued in what I remember of the way she spoke English. My father miser, nobody like. He make me wear old clothes to church. Never like me to have new. He owned land, much land. Only first brother get land. Other older brother go to village, tailor. My father very mean to me. He make me like slave. I care for babies and other brothers and sisters. One time bake bread, it not work. My father angry, almost beat me. Then he see flour molding. He never say anything more, never sorry. I cry many times. After one beating, I run away to older brother in village, and my brother and his wife good to me. He teach me to sew. He a tailor. I help him. He pay me. He tells me of family in America. He say, save for America. My older brother and his wife help me go to America. My father angry, I run away. Come with police. Say so I have to go back to father and help him. My brother make bargain with father. I go back to father's house if father pay my brother for my help. My older brother in village save my money from father for America. Police listen too. I work for father until 18 year old. Father must let me go to America. My father now treat me better. When 18 year old, my tailor brother come for me in wagon. He bring clothes he make me to go to America. His wife make basket with food. And money I make in basket too. I look back for the last time at house and father. First time I see father cry. My older brother say and write what to do. I go on train. Most people know me. My father, very important man. My father changed his mind to let me go. Please come on train to take me back. People know how my father was mean miser. They hide me, say I not get on train. Train stop after long time. I stay near ship to America. I stay near ship to America at friend of older brother. I go on ship to America. No police, no father, no one. As the recounting of Bubba's story continued, I sat enthralled, never daring to interrupt or thinking to question. Bubba continued, I come to America, big statue, many people, New York. My cousin meet me. I stay with my cousin and her husband. I stay in Tai Chi room, sleep on floor with blanket. At night I hear cousin and husband smooching, and at this point Bubba makes sucking sound with her lips. It make me feel funny. My cousin say I need boyfriend. My cousin make me go with boys. 
all boys my cousin gets for me saying, Tachi, Tachi. And Baba moves as if to get away. I no like them. Then I meet Johnny. I know Yanni from home. He from neighbor village. Yanni no touch. He good man. I marry Yanni. We work hard. We have grocery store in New York. I have baby. We have bills, many bills. Soon we have to close grocery store. We light candles. I wake up fine, Yanni gone. What I do now? I have baby, bills, another baby coming. I pull down blind. I make baby quiet. I pretend no one there when men pound on door, holler for money. Only have candles and food from grocery store. I cry, but cry no help. I have baby to feed. Long time go by, I get letter, it from Yoni. He write, Kashu, if you love me, come. He write how to get to place called Manesson. It in Pennsylvania, how I know places. She seems to cry from fear or relief, quietly with head down, the tears start. He send no money, I sell everything I have. Baby do soon, I pray baby born in Manesson. I take train. I pray baby wait to be born Manesson. I try to realize the hardship my brother was enduring in her late teens as she was traveling to a place she knows nothing about. She does not speak the language of this country. She feels alone and is about to give birth with one child already in hand. Was it desperation, hope, self-determination that sustained my bubba? This is early years of Manesson. From what I reason, Bubba may have arrived in Manesson, Pennsylvania about 1916 or shortly thereafter. Any information of a first years of Manesson, I learned by listening to the conversations about, among my grandparents, my mother Eve, and my aunts and uncles. My why this and why that questions wore on my mother's nerves and those of her siblings. But as a result, I did my best to make sense of all their chattering. I remember statements which suggest that a passenger or passenger trains did travel back and forth between Manesson, Pittsburgh, and New York City. Bubba did arrive at the train station in Manesson when the sidewalks were made of wood and the streets were rocks. There were only two main avenues, Donora and Scudamaker, running parallel to railroad tracks and steel mills. Often black soot and grind covered everything outdoors. Small houses with yards were being built for workers at the steel mills. Yanni worked as a butcher for the merchants and farmers in the Mon Valley among the Monongahela River. After moving from one rented place to another, Bubba and Yanni bought a small two-story house and ran a furniture store as well as a grocery store. The location of these places may have been Donner Avenue, Seneca Street, or Nida Avenue as these locations were mentioned in family conversations. Bubba and Yanni's family now included Carrie, born in New York City, Walter, who did wait to be born in Manesson, Joseph and Eve, my mother, and soon with total nine children. It surprised me to learn that Bubba traveled back to New York City to visit her sister Rose. It was during these visits that the wife of my grandfather's Yanni's other brother, also named John, took care of Bubba's growing family. One other trip was mentioned, Bubba's trip to visit her younger sister Magdalena in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. There couldn't have been many trips away from her family as Bubba was kept busy birthing her children, raising chickens and rabbits, tending to vegetable garden and fruit trees, sewing for herself and others, as well as feeding her family and helping yawning. Yes, my Bubba and her Yanni were industrious immigrants, and America was fulfilling their hopes for a new and good beginning. That was until the Great American Depression.